Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's the time of the day when we can relax and craft for about an hour together. And uh, we, work from a pro we work on a project from beginning to end. Uh, so we are working on the Charming Chevron's quilt. We are at the end of the Charming Chevron's quilt. Uh, tonight we'll be stitching on the binding. And then after that, all we got to do is trim and tuck in all the little threads and give it a good wash with a pile of um, those color catchers in the washing machine to, to catch all the red, red fabric, the red dye from the fabric. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so tonight we are stitching on this binding. I, we did a self binding binding where we took the back of the quilt and kind of folded it over the uh, uh, edge of the quilt. And that's gonna be our binding. And I'm just going to machine sew it on. It's going to be quick and easy where there's no hand stitching. Uh, you can if you want, but I'm not doing that. We're just going to machine do it and get her done here. Man, crazy. Uh, then I will, I'll definitely uh, trim all the little threads. I'll probably take a photo of it too before I wash it just in case it I don't know. I'm, I'm always scared throwing it in the washing machine like it's going to come out in like pieces or something. I don't know. <laughs> that won't happen. But I'll take a photo beforehand and then I'll give it a good wash and then uh, we'll see what it looks like. Uh, I'll have it here hopefully done uh, tomorrow. We'll see. But all right, guys, uh, let's sew her up. I'm stoked. We've been working on this project since January. So this will be, it'll be neat to get it, uh, get this binding sewn on. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get cracking night. All right, here it is. We, uh, um, we wonder clipped the heck out of it yesterday. I actually ran out of wonder clips. So the last, the last little bit, this is the top. We, um, we had to pin. <laughs> so uh, we'll sew that area first so I don't stab myself this entire time. But I think I'm going to start on the edge here so I can get this corner, nice mitered corner. And then we will sew around the rest of it and uh, we'll see what time it is then. Maybe we'll search out for some little areas to snip and uh, or, or maybe even tuck in to weave in. And uh, we'll see. We'll see where we're at then. Oh, thank you for coming, Debbie, and thanks, thanks everyone else for coming. Uh, I love being here in the evenings because it's just so fun to chat with you guys. But then I, I actually get, I get my crafting time in. If it wasn't for this, I would not be doing that. So, all right, I'm gonna just, I'm not starting right on the corner because I want to kind of lead up to that. So we'll just go like right here, I think. Ooh. There's a lot of bulk to this guy, so um, we'll be moving it around. I did a little tension test, so we should be okay. Um, so all we're doing is we're just going to sew along this edge. I'll get over a little bit more so we're more straight on for you guys. But we're just sewing along this edge. There are, there are presser feet out there that, that, will, um, that have a little guide, so you can go right. You can actually run the guide along the edge here. I'm not sure about those. I've never used one before. I, I have a whole thing of presser feet, but I'm not sure if I have one that does that. So what I'm doing is I am just really eyeballing it. I have, um, you know, there's this like little eighth inch bit. I'm just kind of splitting that a little bit because I want to get right up on the edge of here as much as I can. So I'm just going to, I'm going to use my stiletto here which is just a turkey lacer with uh, some beads. I'm gonna use that to help me guide my, uh, my binding through. And I'm just gonna make sure I'm watching that uh, things are actually getting stitched. Uh, I'm not using the Debbie, I'm not, I don't have my, my um, uh, I usually have a business card here for my scant quarter inch marking. I'm not worried about that so much. Um, I'm more worried about this line right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but oh yeah, like right here. I'm, I'm worried about this edge and just getting like a 16th of an inch over or so on, on this edge. So I, I don't need to butt it up. My, you know, since I just freehand cut this, my binding might actually be skinnier 
or uh, wider in certain areas. So I'm not really concerned about how wide it is. So I don't have my business card to butt it up against here. I'm just looking at this edge here and I'm gonna aim for like right in the center of my foot here because then I think it'll sew about a sixteenth of an inch. That's kind of what I did for that baby quilt and it, and it worked okay. So we're gonna do that. Um, let's see. You know, I kind of wanted to start and stop uh, in this kind of patterned area because I think if I start and stop here, it'll hide. Like, I think I'm gonna back tack this. It'll, it'll hide that a little bit more. So let's start right here. Okay. I'm just gonna add a little back tack. I could tuck that in, but I don't know. I'm just so used to back tacking. All right, and I'm gonna just remove these as I go. The nice thing about Wonder Clips is I can just, you know, I just push them down and they have that flat bottom, so I can just push them down right on my table and then just slide them away. It shouldn't move my binding or anything at all. And then I'm just gonna take uh, my, uh, my stiletto here and just kind of help me guide through. And that's gonna help, especially when we get to about right here. I'm gonna remove this pin, or this uh, wonder clip. Ooh, our miter isn't great there, but um, I'm gonna stick my stiletto right there as if it's a pin, so I can get that angle just right. And I'm gonna just go guide my stiletto in that little line there, and about right there right where it meets that, that angle. So my needle is down. You, you definitely wanna have your needle down. Uh, and then I'll, I'll lift the foot up so I, can, so I can pivot. And I'm using this green teal uh, thread just cause I have it, but it's kinda cute. It's like a little weird, extra little framing, framing device around, <laughs> around the whole thing. I'm, I'm actually doing it cause I'm, I'm out of, um, I'm out of all my red thread. All right, so now I'm, I'm to the part where I'm gonna get the, the pins. We're gonna come across those. I'm just gonna have my, my magnetic uh, pin guy next to me. And I'm gonna throw the pins at it as I go. We'll keep it right there. All right, make sure the foot's down again. All right. Slide that guy off. I'm gonna have a whole pile of these wonder clips sitting here when I'm done. There, get my stiletto in there to help. Let's just double check the tension now that we can see. Yeah, I think that's cute. I think uh, it looks perfectly fine. Oh, I missed a. Uh, I should have stopped like one stitch earlier maybe there, but that's perfectly fine too. We could kind of shape this miter a little bit better, but you know, it's gonna go through the wash, so it'll it'll change up a little bit. As long as we got it sewn right here. We could actually hand stitch the miter, kind of like how we did with the um, with um, our normal bindings that we do here. But, um, you know, meh. I think it's fine as is. All right, shimmy this a little bit more. Ah, I'm stabbing myself already. That's why I want to do this row with the pins first. Ooh, this guy was upside down. Ooh, you guys will be happy to know I uh, found that missing safety pin. <laughs> I have not recovered it yet, but I know where it is. So that's, that's, that's a good progression from last night. Um, it's that hutch that's behind me. Um, you know, when you guys first come on and, and see me, that um, that little wood drawer thing behind me, it's it's underneath there. I, I saw it in the, uh, I saw it in the morning sunlight. The light just hit it just right and, and I found it then. <laughs> So uh, I just didn't want to crawl down underneath there. It's like the farthest corner underneath, so I'll have to lay on the floor and um, and stretch. So I didn't want to do it this morning, but I'll do it tonight just so I don't forget about it. <laughs> yep, Julie, last step at the machine. 
So here's where you can see I'm clipping. This is kind of a bummer, but I'm going to keep this in mind next time I do a quilt. Um, since I have this like half inch binding, I'm actually clipping, clipping the corners here. See, I'm covering up the corner of this chevron. What I should have done is um, when I trimmed this, uh, the front, I should have uh, maybe had it a half inch wide instead of just a quarter inch wide. Um, although the front was a quarter inch, maybe I, I don't know, maybe I should have had the, the batting go another quarter inch so that when I sewed it, the half inch binding here, it would have been right on that point. I don't know, a little detail I, I could have thought, I could have thought a little bit more about, but I wouldn't have known unless I would have made the mistake. Yep, no should have ing it. That's that's true. Uh, I just like uh, I like I I like acknowledging the uh, um, possible areas for improvement and uh, <laughs> ingraining them in my psyche a little bit for next time. Yep, I got my um, penguin and fish tag here. So make sure to remind me, guys. This is gonna go on that last row. So we're on the top. Um, yeah, it has to go, so we have the the right side and then the bottom and then the, the left side. So I want to get it at the bottom of the left side. Uh, so this is, I have to go like three, three um, roots to get there. So, <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to forget that. I, I remembered it this morning and, and grabbed it. Um, but yeah, I want to make sure to get that in. Yeah, and that's the best part. I got that... Um, I have uh, I have my my written um, label done already because we we machine we uh, free motion quilted that into the um, into the last chevron row so that's awesome I don't have to do that extra step that's the step that I'm always like meh <laughs> so I I did not I did not put a label in that baby quilt. I think I'm going to wait till the baby is born and then make a quilt and and give it to give it to the mom then the, the label or ask for the baby quilt back, back so I can put the label into the quilt but um, it'd be nice to label it with um, you know maybe the baby's name and and birthday I think on there so um, so no label right now, and and we'll do that. We'll do that after the baby's born, which I think will be end of October. So on a finish it Friday here, we might be making a baby label, <laughs> comma like early November. I'll have to remember that November's finish it Friday. Assuming the baby's born, we'll be making a baby label. All right, I kind of want to get, I'm going to get the grip it out here. We're, we got, it's just heavy, the quilt, and there's a lot of bulk to the quilt, and so having a little grip it is going to help me guide it along a little bit. I'm rotated here funny. Oh, I, it's because I'm attached to a pin! Uh, soon pins will be done. Pin stabbing my shirt and... Making the quilt go awry. Ugh, and the bulk is just... I gotta get situated. Quilt's not moving. There we go. Ooh, you're wa watching on vacation from Cocoa Beach, Florida. Ugh, wow. Oh, I got my stiletto right here. It's a it's a turkey lacer, Suzanne. It's just a it's a turkey lacer, you know, like for Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it's got these cute little beads on it. I think the key bead is this flat bead. Um, and I have a blue one too, but like this flat bead makes like it nice for a handle. Uh, and then it, there's just like a little dab of glue at the bottom there. I got it as a gift, but they would be really kind of fun to make one of these times. I'll finish it Friday, we should 
try and make a bunch of those or something. They'd be good um, holiday gifts for sewy people. But yeah, I love it. I love that it has a point. I love how little it is. I mean, sometimes stilettos aren't as small as this, but um, I love that it has that point. I can use it as a pin, kind of like that, hold it down, and you know, I can really get into little spaces. But man, it comes in handy. It's like an extra finger <laughs> that's teeny tiny. Oh man, yeah, this is just not traveling well. Maybe if I put the bulk over here. Ugh, okay, I need this guy. All right, almost done with pins. Except for when I'm done with the pins, then I'm just gonna have stacks and stacks of Wonder Clips here. But that's okay. Wonder Clips can't stab ya, so <laughs> it's a benefit. Alright. I need like to get my hand in my fingers in here. I need to need to grip it and and my fingers. Just because this is it's just so bulky. Drop. You tried to resist, but you're weak. Yeah, that it popped up there again. It must be popular because they they keep um, they keep having it return, and it always looks like there's tons of purchases for it. So it's that um, that uh, that cordless iron that I that I use. I actually got it from uh, Mass Drop too. And oh man, not having a cord is like game changing for an iron. It's so awesome. Bulky quilts want to pull to the left. It's a struggle to keep your fabrics, all that fabric straight. Exactly, Karen. I, I'm totally struggling right here. Um, so this grip it is helping, but man, it just wants to pull. I don't like it. Ooh, this is the last pin. I can get rid of these guys. They're out of here, pins. Stabbed myself too many times already. Okay, now we're just in Wonder Clip territory. I do not think you'll be disappointed, Jenna, that it's, uh, man, one of my favorite purchases this year for sure is that, uh, that Panasonic cordless iron. Oh, you have it too, Shirley. Best iron ever. Yes! What I like about it too, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this aspect of it, but it's really heavy. Like it's like a heavy, um, you know, like a cast iron iron, but it's nice because you can just let it, the weight of it sit on the fabric and just kind of push it along. You don't have to like hold it there. Um, oh, you made one of these. It, oh, it took ages to find a short turkey lacer. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'll have to, I'm gonna have to keep, um, next time I'm at the grocery store, I'll have to, Keep an eye out for for them. I haven't searched for uh, turkey lacers before. All right, so here is here is that miter corner again. So I'm going to use the turkey lacer, my um, stiletto here, as a pin. I'm just plopping it right in there, and that's kind of the point. Oop, lung up. That's kind of the point I'm aiming for. All right, one more stitch there. I'm right. I'm right in that fold. Oh, Amazon has the turkey lacers. Oh, that's good to know, Amy. I'll have to um, check that out sometime. I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have beads somewhere, but actually, now that I think of it, I don't think I've ever purchased big beads like this. Yeah, it's an excuse to go to the store. <laughs> Oops, uh, lost my label here. All right, let's shimmy. I gotta rotate this whole fella again. Oh, you got your iron from Amazon. Yeah, sometimes um, sometimes the price is the same on, on Amazon. 
It's, it's discounted on mass drop always, but sometimes the discount is the same as what um, Amazon does it, and then you can get it, you know, get it faster. But man, that mass drop's a sneaky little site that keeps making me buy stuff. <laughs> oh, so I can tell you I, I got my husband's birthday gifts from, from mass drop. I got like all of it from, from mass drop. And uh, I actually just ordered more from it uh, a couple days ago to kind of go with the gift. So I got them. So Mass Drop, it has sewing stuff and like knitting stuff, but it also has like totally random other categories like gaming and, um, you know, camping and beauty supplies. It's just kind of an odd bag of stuff that they sell. And then you, you, you go on there and put down, you know, the categories that you want to see and, and that sort of thing. Ooh, yeah, they have bolts of fabric, too. Like, really, really pretty right now. Uh, but I got him from Mass Drop a tent. And I got us uh, each a sleeping bag. And then uh, today, uh, um, this week, it popped up on Mass Drop. I got some sleeping pads. Um to go under the sleeping bags. So uh, my husband's been talking about wanting to go camping like up north in Minnesota or just wherever for ages and ages, but we we don't have any camping gear and it, it's just been all talk um, lately. So I'm like, let's actually get the stuff and and go do that. So uh, I got I got all of those things from from Mass Drop. And I'm I'm pretty stoked about them. We haven't uh, haven't used them yet. Uh, his birthday was just last week. Whoop! Stiletto, stiletto down. All right. Um. But I think we might try camping in the backyard this weekend. <laughs> Give it a go. See how it works. Get a campfire going and put the tent up. Uh, how many yards in the bolt? I think typically there is, it depends what type of fabric it is, but for like quilting weight fabric, typically it's 10 to 15 yards in a bolt. I think it kind of depends on what it is and what company is selling it, but I'm sure it says. But yeah, there's some pretty solid, solid fabrics being sold. So if you had a quilt in mind that you were going to use a lot of that color fabric or you just really, really love, a certain color, it'd be, it'd be pretty fun to get a bolt of fabric. Oh, Gretchen, you should totally add that iron to your birthday list. It's, it's, it's a treat, for real, working with that iron. Not having a cord is just kind of amazing. Oh, the bolts on Mass Drop are, Robin, you think they're 15 yards? Yeah, that, that seems right for, that's, that's typically what they are. Sometimes there's some smaller bolts, um, but yeah, I think, I think 15 yards is kind of the, the quilting weight standard. All right, time to adjust again. This is, I'm all messed up. Okay, we're now, what side are we sewing here? This is the, this is the right side. So I don't think this is the side. No, this is, I, I want to put the label on the other side. Wait, is this the top? Yeah, this is the top. Yeah, so I want this facing out. So we'll we'll put it on the left side, not the right side. Ooh, you got a bolt of gray a while ago. That would be a good color to just have on hand. Gray looks so pretty with with everything. But yeah, like with this quilt, for example, you know, I, I'm using so much of this red. Okay, I'm just I'm just snipping this little thread now. I'm I'm using so much of this red, and I use a lot of this red on the back too that, you know, having a bolt wouldn't have hurt for this, this project. I mean, I'd still have a ton left over. Um, after, you know, if I bought a whole bolt of this, but if you just really love the color or use it a lot, like gray, that's a, that's a good color, good neutral. Or even white, just having a bolt of white sitting around would be kind of nice. Oh, you would rather have a gigantic cone of embroidery thread? That would be pretty fun. More little threads hanging out.
I'm glad I put um, the Wonder Clips this close to each other. I think any farther apart and this thing would start unraveling on me. I mean, I could have pressed this. I could have ironed this as I went and then it would be holding its place a little bit better, but ugh, who wants to press around a whole quilt? Not me. This is good enough. And once you, I mean, I'm going to send this through the washing machine, so all my pretty ironing would go away anyway. Oh, this is fun. Look, we did flowers uh, in this row. I'd like to do more flowers. More flower free motion quilting. I got to get the back of my I Love Home quilt done so we can do some free motion quilting on that. That, that guy's sitting around, just waiting to be quilted before I forget how to do all this quilting. Ugh. Rip it, I need you. Yeah, grip it's coming in um, handy right now, for sure. Man, I really feel like I'm forcing this quilt here through, but it's just because it's so bulky. I still like these guys, these kind of orange peels. We just did some weird meandering in there. So this was after that 45 minutes. Remember I say like at, at 45 minutes, I'm, look at all these. I'm kind of, my free motion quilting kind of goes downhill. That's when I putzed around here. <laughs> meandering got a little funny. I'm excited about this quilt too because I got to use up, um, I had a lot of these fabrics sitting around, like some of them for like a decade, just looking pretty on my shelf. Like it was one of those things where it was too pretty to use a lot of these fabrics. And I'm trying to get over that idea. I'm trying to actually use um, I'm honoring my pretty fabrics more by using them than them sitting sitting on the shelf. But I definitely have a history of uh, not wanting to use use them up because they're too pretty as is. I don't want to cut them, but um, I'm over that now. Now that I'm making more stuff, it's way more fun to make something out of it. Oh, Linda, I did. I did find the pin. Here, I have a little hole in my um, extension table there. I just throw all these guys in there. <laughs> Except for now I got Wonder Clips on the floor, too. Just one. I did find the pin, my, uh, my missing safety pin. Oh, I'm stuck here somehow. Uh, it was, it's under that kind of table dresser thing that's behind me. I saw it in the morning sunlight. <laughs> you know, I, I need like a little sparkle on it so I can figure out where it went. And and I got that with the different lighting this morning. So I, I haven't retrieved it yet. It's, it's way back in a corner and I didn't want to get on the floor and reach for it, but I'll do that when we're done here tonight. That'll be the true like wrapping up of this project. All the different phalanges are put away. I still want to go around and, and trim all the little threads. I suppose I should do that before I, before I wash it. Oh, use a yard. I don't actually have a yardstick, but I have a quilting ruler. I can use that uh, underneath. That's a good idea. <laughs> Have any of you guys watched that show, Making It, on NBC? I just, uh, I just watched episode two tonight on their app. I think it's just the cutest show. It's so reminiscent of the, the Great uh, British Baking Show, which I love. The Great Bit British Baking Show is like the most calming, lovely, friendly, sweet show. And I think they definitely are modeling the making it show after after that. And I just, I mean, if you've watched, if you're a fan of um, 
parks and recreation, then, I mean, then you gotta watch it because Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman are in it and they're like my favorite people. <laughs> So I, I I would just watch it just if they were on it. <laughs> but it, it's totally fun to see what they make and everything too. All the makers. Yep, exactly, Linda. It fell in a spot that is safe to walk, and now I can guarantee safe passage through through the kitchen. <laughs> Once I get that pin. Yes, it's just like the baking show. It's funny because some of the comments I've heard, just like random people on Facebook saying about it, is that, oh, it's so slow, and what's with that Amy person? She's just so weird. And I'm like, okay, clearly that person has never seen, um, does not know who Amy Poehler is, and has never seen the great British baking show, because it's, it's definitely got that vibe to it. And Amy Poehler's just kooky. I like her though, but yeah, I've decided that Nick Offerman is like my favorite person ever. <laughs> I just like him so much. He's just funny. All right, we're rotating. So this is the bottom row. Okay, I gotta remember after this row, um, after this row, I gotta get that label on. I know. I love that. I just, it's funny. I just actually finished a few months ago. It's probably actually a year ago now. I'm watching all of the Parks and Rec. Um, they're all on Netflix, I think. Oh, I've not read her book. Oh, I got to do that. I'll put that on my library list. Uh, but I just watched all the Parks and Rec, you know, in one gulp basically right. Um, binge watched all the Parks and Rec on Netflix and oh man. They're still awesome and hilarious. You have to get past season one, though. Season one is kind of meh, but if you can get past season one, then all of a sudden all the characters are hilarious and you love all of them, um, especially Nick Offerman's character. He's just the best. The one girl... Oh, you loved it. You loved it, too. Oh, that's good, Linda. Yeah, it's just so sweet. Oh, she narrated her book? Oh, that's funny. Maybe I'll have, um, I don't have Audible, but sometimes you can check out the audio, the audio versions of books at, at the library. And you still have to rent them, which is weird. Or you still have to check them out. You know, you'd think it's a digital thing. You'd think they could just give it out willy-nilly, but I'm sure it still has a license on it or something. But anyway, um... Maybe there's the audible one, because I'm sure it's worth it to hear it with um, her narrating it. That'd be just fun. But yeah, I love the two of them and the two of them together. I mean, that's that's what's totally... I mean, the show is fun anyway, and I would watch it anyway, but you get those two together, and they're just... They're so sweet, too. You know, they're just excited about things, you know? They're just happy people, you know? And you gotta, you gotta like, watching that. But yeah, we don't have, I mean, we don't get NBC normally, because we still, we have an antenna, and we never switched to digital or whatever when that happened a decade ago or whenever that happened. So we have, like, some crazy antenna, and, and we don't get NBC. But um, we have Apple TV, um, hooked up to our TV, and if you download the, um, you get the NBC app uh, for Apple TV, and they're showing those, they're showing them for free. Probably just the most recent one, maybe, I don't know. Um, what kind of machine am I using? Uh, I am using um, a 19, oh gosh, I think it's 74. I'll have to look it up again, but it's a 70s Sears Kenmore sewing machine. It's totally mechanical, no computery stuff happening with it. We've kind of basically totally taken it apart um, <laughs> during our live videos to oil it and get a new belt in. So we, we've worked a lot on, on the sewing machine here in the evenings. But yeah, uh, it's a 70s Kenmore. It, it, was, uh, it was my mom's sewing machine in college.
and I like it. It works, works great. No fancy, uh, um, no fanciness to it, like no fancy stitches or anything. That's one thing I would like. If I had like a little blanket stitch for like applique, that would be cool. I would use that. Um, it does have different stitches, but they're all like clothing stitches. So like when you have a stretchy knit, there's a special stitch to make it stretchy. Um, so it has a lot of those like garment sewing stitches, which I don't know much about actually. That's a world I need to get into yet. Uh, figure all that out. But, you know, I use a straight stitch and a zigzag, and, and that's about it. And then I have different feet. These feet didn't, didn't come with it. But, um, I have the, some of the original feet yet. Oh, the one thing that's not working with it yet is I still can't lower the, the feed dogs right, but we'll figure that out yet. Yes, the Nick Offerman and Amy Poehler, they just make, they, they make the show happy and you just laugh. You wait for Friday night. Oh, to watch a British Bake Off. Yeah, I have to, I kind of, um, I don't think I, oh, we'd probably get that if I looked up the right channel on, on Apple TV or something, but... I like watching the Great British Bake Off all in one bout to like a whole season once it's up on Netflix. That show just makes me happy too. That one is just, you can't leave that show, the Great British Bake Off, without just feeling just like your heart is happy after that show. It just really is. And, and I'm so happy that now there's like an American um, competition show that has that same feel where just people are happy and they're making cool things and there's no reason for people to get angry at other people and stress out and it just feels good watching it not not all like hyper anxiety watching it so I mean I think this is it's very clearly um, this making it modeled after it like you know, it just some of the shots feel similar and it, it's, you know, it's in a, like a huge craft barn basically. And that's kind of similar to the baking show where they go off to the tent, you know, in this one, they go off to the barn and instead of like their little baking stations, they have little cutting tables and workshop tables. It's, it's pretty similar. I like it. I hope they do another season. That would be awesome. I would... Keep watching it for sure. Yes, get ready. <laughs> get ready, make instead of bake. <laughs> exactly. And they kind of a they kind of a little nod to that too, I feel like. Oh, they're just so sweet. And uh, Nick Offerman, just his laugh is so freaking funny. He has this little like cartoon giggle. <laughs> And you just wait for him to, to do it because it's funny. But he is a legit maker. Like, he has an actual not ironic wood shop. <laughs> like, he, he has a wood shop with employees and a whole wood, like, art woodworking business, Nick Offerman, in real life, which is hilarious because his character on um, Parks and Recreation is obsessed with woodworking and uh, it's funny that he actually does have a real running working workshop in real life and it's not meant to be funny it's not meant to be like haha my character on this show that I was on had this and now I do too he like is a legit like wood craftsman <laughs> but yeah you can like google his actual I forget what it's called but I mean they're making real furniture out of wood and he's got artisans and stuff working for him it's just it's just funny. So he, he knows what he's doing there. And um, and it looks like, seems like Amy Poehler doesn't. And I don't know, the combo of them are just really funny. <laughs> Amy po Poehler thought a serger was a coffee maker. <laughs> I like it. 
Oh, Chris Pratt cut down a, a tree there in Washington and sent it to Offerman to make a table. Robin, that is awesome and makes perfect sense. <laughs> I can very easily see that being a real life true thing. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you could go to his website and it's it's like a real wood shop. You wouldn't know that it was, you know, this this actor guy's, you know, thing. All right, this is the last row after this turn. So let's see, this is the, this is the bottom. So you know what, before, let's get the needle down. Before I get too much further, um, well, we'll get a little further so you guys can see, because I think I think all my comments are going to be covering it up. Or all, all your guys' comments. So let's get a little higher here. Okay, so I'm going to quickly place um, this guy before I before he totally disappears. So this is, um, yeah, this is the bottom. So I want it somewhere here. I don't know, it could go, I could put it, so it kind of blends in. That might be a good idea. Have it in when within one of these stripes, so it kind of blends in. Um, the other option would be to go up a little higher and do it in the red. But I think it's kind of pretty, like maybe right, maybe right at the bottom here, the bottom of this chevron. I think right there. Let's do let's do it right there. I'm gonna get an extra wonder clip. Kind of put it so I can read read it yet. Oh, he owns, Chris Pratt owns a um, island there and had to cut down a 150-year-old tree. Oh, man, yeah, I would want to save that, too. We actually, we had to cut down our tree in our front yard just because it was, it was rotting and it was getting to the point that, you know, it could fall on our house or our car and at any moment, like with any big windstorm, we had some arboretists and stuff, arborists come out and check it out and yeah, it had to come down. So we we just recently cut down a tree in our front yard and we saved all the big chunks of wood because we thought, oh, it'd be so fun to, you know, once these dry out or something to make some little tables out of the wood. So we're hoping to, I mean, we don't have a big slab of wood. That would be super cool. But, um, you know, little stumps. So we'll make some stump furniture one of these days and we'll have a lot of big fires or something that will burn forever because they'll be made out of like these huge stumps. Oop. All right, this is our last last row here, but let's get situated again. I, I, I really like this green. It's so goofy. Like normally you would kind of blend the colors. You do it like a red, but it's kind of fun. I kind of like it. And we're working with what we got too. We're getting a little bunchy here. Ugh, I need my grip it. Where'd that go? Underneath here. I like him too, Chris Pratt. I follow him on, on Instagram. He does some fun, funny Instagram stuff. But yeah, Parks and Rec, Parks and Recreation, that's that's a funny show with all of them, all of them on. I have a friend who won't watch the, the last season of it because she doesn't want it to end. <laughs> so she skipped, skipped the last season of, of Parks and Rec. Man, this grip it here is really helping me push this quilt along. Um, it just wants to keep shimmying to the side. Ooh, I got a little pucker in there. Oh well. Last row. The last side, I suppose. 
So here's, um, I think I can show you now. Here's the label sewn in. I think that's sweet. And it'll be kind of hidden in this chevron, which I think will be pretty cute. And his, the little penguin kind of matches this blue. So that's kind of an extra bonus. Nice when things like that match. All right, I gotta rotate. <sighs> rotate this quilt, get in my lap here. It's awesome, these wonder clips though. I can, you know, toss this quilt all over the place and these wonder clips just hold everything in. Oh, you love the green thread, Robin. Yeah, I think it's, it's something I would have never chosen. Uh, but I'm uh, just trying to use up stuff and I had it and uh, you know so that's why I'm using it and you know I think that's really fun I think it's it's pretty cute to the the green thread but yeah I, I never would have chosen it if I had like all the materials in the world in front of me so that's kind of fun fun using up stuff you have uh, you, you get combinations of things that I don't think would happen natural naturally that's always exciting I like I like when that those things happen I do wish um, well I like the machine as it is but it would be nifty if uh, it had that needle down feature. That needle down feature is pretty nice. So uh, my machine doesn't have it here, but a needle down feature when it's on, you can turn it on and off, but when it's on, your machine will always go an extra stitch, whatever it needs to do so that the needle ends up down in the fabric like, like this. So it'll always end up down and which is great because you need it down to like pivots and it when it's down then your fabric won't slip around you know if i accidentally move it when i stop stitching it won't go anywhere because it's being held down um with that needle down feature whereas if it's up i can accidentally like pull the whole fabric and it can slide out so that needle down feature on on new machines that's that would be handy and sometimes it's hard for me to land exactly with the needle down. Um, but yeah, yours, yours, Gretchen doesn't do that either. Oh yeah, it's kind of Christmassy with with the red, uh, the red with this little green, green stripe border around it, green thread. I think it's kind of cute. Red would have been nice too, because then it would just like, like this red would bleed into this red, which I think was kind of my original idea, but ran out of red, so that ain't happening. I think this is cute too. It's such a detail that no one's gonna notice or pay attention to it anyway. It's just like something that I like. Oh, you love the needle down on your brother sewing machine? Yeah, my mom's sewing machine has has the needle down feature and I think that would be like equivalent to the cordless irons like a magic little extra thing that just you don't need but it makes life you know more easier than you would expect <laughs> especially with like free motion quilting to end up with the needle down um, would be pretty handy Getting a little bunched up here. Let's see if I can mitigate that a little. Ugh, it's hard to push again. A hidden bolt. A hidden bolt. I do have, oh uh, yeah, I have those hidden bolts of um, fleece. But nope, I think, I think I'm know where all the other bolts are. 
I do want to kind of go through my fabric stuff again. I have a lot of old clothing that I've saved for the purpose of cutting up. I, I'd like to do something, a quilt out of that coming up. That's, I don't know, itching at me lately. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Glennis. Glennis says, I like how easily you roll with the punches and adapt. Well, what else are you going to do, right? <laughs> All right, we are getting there. I got like two and a half feet left. This is to go around this um, binding. It's like taking the exact amount of time it usually takes us in the evenings here. We're gonna get done at our normal time, which is just kind of funny. Funny how that works out. It's going to take me forever to put all these wonder clips away. It is nice. I can just slide them off, though. Oh, you have some of your mom's clothes that you saved to make something. Oh, that's really sweet. All right, almost there. Yeah, so all I'm going to do yet on this is kind of just lay it on the ground and, and trim all the little um, threads, you know, like all these little threads that are hanging out. And there's a lot of threads in the middle from like where we started and stopped free motion quilting. Some of those maybe I'll weave or like stitch in. Um, others I'll just trim. So that's really all I need to do yet. And I, I probably won't do that live here just this trim all the stuff i'm probably just going to um because it you know I, it's easier if it's laying flat on the ground so i'll probably do that maybe this weekend and um wash it up this weekend so um oh and next week i'm going to be out the entire week so i won't be on here at all next week but the week after i'll be back and i'll um i'll get to show you this quilt finished then, um, in theory, pending I've washed it and everything by then. If I do it uh, Friday during the day, maybe then, then I will, um, I'll show you guys on Friday. So tomorrow, though, is Thursday, so it's uh, the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt we'll be working on again. So we get new blocks tomorrow morning, so check out the thesplendidsampler.com tomorrow morning to see what the new block is. Right, I'm just putting a little back tack there. Okay, let's take this off. Oh, that was odd. Oh, I just tore the thread a little bit. Huh, must be weird. I'm like stuck somewhere. Where am I stuck? Oh, I think, weird. I think it was stuck on the top a little bit. I don't know, something's weird, but it stopped being weird right at the right point, at least. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna just trim these little guys up. I'm just gonna go like this, and we'll pull those to the back here. Yeah, I got a lot of little little threads to trim all over the place. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at this. And I'll, I'll lay this all out and take a photo um, for you guys too. But look, binding on. And it looks, um, looks nice from the back too, I think. Cute little green, green edging around the whole deal. But yeah, so this, this weekend I'll try and take a, uh, a photo of it um, a little higher so you guys can see and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think the green is okay. I mean, it would have been nice for it to bleed all the way into the red, but you know, there's something nice about giving it a little, a little edge too. But yay, it always looks so much more finished once you have the, the little edge on here. Let's, let's get to the, my little label here. We'll spread this guy out a little bit. So there's, there's the label. Yeah, this was totally fast. So yeah, a whole binding in the, 
well, basically kind of two hours. Like it, it took me like yesterday, I had to pin the whole thing. Um, and today, but I got to sew it all in, in one hour, which is pretty nice. Yeah, and here's, let's see what it looks like with the label. So remember I, I sewed, I sewed the label <laughs> at the bottom here and this looks cute. So the last color we used was this green. So that's kind of, that's the same green that we used for the edge, but there, August 2018, it, we, we finished in August. So I'm glad it didn't go like to September, <laughs> but yay. And all our other like improv piecing. Oh, I'm excited to lay this, lay this out on the ground and, and take a good, take a good look at it. I am loving it though. And man, it doesn't feel done yet. I gotta wash it, I gotta trim, but I'm, I'm pretty stoked to be this far, that's for sure. All right guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll call it an evening. Hello. So yay, almost another project done. Let's see if I can hold it up a little bit here. It's, it's hefty. <laughs> so here's, here's a little label. But yeah, the edge looks so cute. And that was just super easy to just fold it over and, and stitch it down. Uh, but yeah, so I will, I'll lay this out and uh, get a good photo of it and snip. I'm gonna just lay it out and uh, just snip all the little bits. Um, and it's gonna look real nice once it's washed because this has been drug on the ground since, uh, since January, right? So we've collected, collected dirt since January and uh, it'll be nice to have it washed and, and it'll fluff up too. I think you'll really start to see those chevrons, the chevrons that we didn't stitch, um, those will poof up a little bit um, and we'll get to see those pop out a little bit. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, that's the best part when it's washed and warm and fluffy and done. <laughs> So yay! Okay guys, I'm gonna get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies and I'll, uh, if I get this done this week, this week still, like Friday maybe, I'll, I'll be sure to show you guys uh, here. Um, or maybe, maybe I'll do like a quick little Facebook Live when it's on the ground and I can um, get up high and, and show you guys uh, what the finished, the finished quilt does. Like a little, a little thing from the living room, like how we, um, when we pinned it and everything, maybe we'll do something like that so I can share with you guys. So yay, thanks again for joining me and I will see you guys tomorrow for the Splendid Sampler 2 block. I'm excited to see what that is. So see you tomorrow guys, have a great evening, uh, good night.